never even imagine. Traffickers have forced young people to drive ice cream trucks or to sing in touring boys' choirs. Trafficking has even been found in a hair braiding salon in New Jersey. The scheme in that case was incredible. The traffickers found young families who were from Ghana and Togo, and they told these families that your daughters are going to get a fine education in the United States. They then located the winners of the green card lottery, and they told them, "We'll help you out. We'll get you a plane ticket. We'll pay your fees. All you have to do is take this young girl with you, say that she's your sister or your spouse." Once everyone arrived in New Jersey, the young girls were taken away and put to work for 14-hour days, seven days a week, for five years. They made their traffickers nearly four million dollars. This is a huge problem. So what have we done about it? We've mostly turned to the criminal justice system. But keep in mind, most victims of human trafficking are poor and marginalized. They're migrants, people of color. Sometimes they're in the sex trade, and for populations like these, the criminal justice system is too often part of the problem rather than the solution. In study after study from countries ranging from Bangladesh to the United States, between 20 to 60 percent of the people in the sex trade who were surveyed said that they had been raped or assaulted by the police in the past year alone. People in prostitution, including people who have been trafficked into it, regularly receive multiple convictions for prostitution. Having that criminal record makes it so much more difficult to leave poverty, leave abuse, or leave prostitution if that person so desires. Workers outside of the sex sector, if they try and resist their treatment, they risk deportation. In case after case I've studied, employers have no problem calling on law enforcement. To try and threaten or deport their striking trafficked workers, if those workers run away, they risk becoming part of the great mass of undocumented workers who are also subject to the whims of law enforcement if they're caught. Law enforcement is supposed to identify victims and prosecute traffickers. But out of an estimated 21 million victims of human trafficking in the world, they have helped and identified fewer than 50,000 people. That's like comparing the population of the world to the population of Los Angeles, proportionally speaking. As for convictions, out of an estimated 5,700 convictions in 2013, fewer than 500 were for labor trafficking. Keep in mind that labor trafficking accounts for 68 percent of all trafficking, but fewer than 10 percent of the convictions. I've heard one expert say that trafficking happens where need meets greed. I'd like to add one more element to that. Trafficking happens in sectors where workers are excluded from protections and denied the right to organize. Trafficking doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in systematically degraded work environments. You might be thinking, "Oh, she's talking about failed states or war-torn states," or I'm actually talking about the United States. Let me tell you what that looks like. I spent many months researching a trafficking case called Global Horizons, involving hundreds of Thai farm workers. They were sent all over the states to work in Hawaii pineapple plantations, in Washington apple orchards, and anywhere the work was needed. They were promised three years. Of solid agricultural work, so they made a calculated risk. They sold their land, they sold their wives' jewelry to make thousands in recruitment fees for this company, Global Horizons. But once they were brought over, their passports were confiscated. Some of the men were beaten and held at gunpoint. They worked so hard they fainted in the fields. This case hit me so hard. After I came back home, I was wandering through the grocery store, and I froze in the produce department. I was remembering the over-the-top meals the Global Horizon survivors would make for me every time I showed up to interview them. They finished one meal with this plate of perfect long-stem strawberries, and as they handed them to me, they said, "Aren't these the kind of strawberries that you eat with somebody special in the states?" And don't they taste so much better when you know the people whose hands picked them for you?